Ciao, mabuhay. You are watching The Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word incarnate, revealing himself to us in the Sunday readings. Today is the 11th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And in the Gospel, St. Mark recounts two of Jesus' parables about seeds. In the first parable, Jesus likens the kingdom of God to seed that has been scattered on the land by a sower. Through time, it grows, and when the crop is ready, it will be harvested. This reminds us that it is God who makes things happen and grow in His kingdom. Then the second parable compares God's kingdom to a mustard seed, the smallest of seeds. But once sown, it puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. Friends, in God's kingdom, the smallest in the eyes of the world can become the greatest. It is all God's work. Will we allow God to cultivate God's kingdom? Will we allow God's work to grow and bear fruit? First reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches tear off a tender shoot and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it every winged thing in the shade of its boughs. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The Word of the Lord.
second reading. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please Him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The Word of the Lord. Let it grow. Let our reflection this Sunday focus on the kingdom of God. How does it grow? Remember, it is God's kingdom. So I think we just have to accept that it is God who will make it grow. We do our share, but let us not deprive God of his activity of making it grow. In the first reading from the prophet Ezekiel, we see the imagination and the creativity of the prophet. The prophecy is addressed to Israel, the people that has undergone so many trials in its history. And we have to say, too, that those trials are partly caused by Israel's forgetfulness of God, infidelity towards God. Israel's detaching itself from its covenant relationship with God and even shifting its allegiance to other gods. But look at the greatness of God. Through the prophet Ezekiel, a promise is made, a promise that will console Israel in, captive, in captivity, a promise that will assure Israel even when Jerusalem would be destroyed years later. And the promise comes through an imagery. God will take a shoot from a cedar tree huh, and plant it on the mountain, the holy mountain. And from that shoot, a big, big, mighty, majestic tree will grow. And this is all God's action. Remember the cedar tree. We always hear that in the Old Testament, especially in the Psalms. It is connected with Lebanon, and it is really a majestic tree. It is probably considered the, the, the king of trees in its sturdiness, in its uh, bounty. So God is promising Israel from the tiny shoot of the cedar tree, which I will plant, there will be a great tree. This is the promise made to Israel. And it is all God's work. Will Israel accept it? Will Israel have faith in the promise of God? Will Israel trust in this almost, uh, not only mysterious, but humanly impossible image of a shoot being planted. And in the end, it will be a big, big, majestic tree. We hope, we hope Israel would allow God. In the second reading, we have the beautiful example of St. Paul. He was torn. He wanted to see the Lord soon. But that would mean for him dying and ending his apostolic mission. But then, look, in the end, he allows God to take over. He becomes indifferent. If God chooses to take him now, let it be. If God chooses to let him continue as an apostle, let it be. He will let God 
make the decision. After all, it is Jesus' kingdom that he is preaching. So let God decide whether he still needs Paul in mission or Paul could now go to rest in his bosom. Look at that faith. And the concern is, let God do what he wants, and I will cooperate for the growth of his kingdom. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to Mark Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day, and through it all the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of its own accord the land yields fruit, First the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, To what shall we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, that, when it is sown in the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. Let it grow. We have been reflecting on the kingdom of God. And our fundamental question, which I think uh, we already know the answer uh, to it, is uh, who begins this kingdom and who makes it grow? If it is God's kingdom, well, it begins with God and God will make it grow. And our role is to look at it, to behold it, and participate in God's action. In the first reading, Israel is given a promise through the prophet Ezekiel. God uses the image of a shoot of the cedar, which will be planted on the holy mountain. And with God taking care of it, it will grow into a majestic cedar tree, which during that time was considered really the king of trees. That's a promise. But will Israel remain faithful to God and will allow God to fulfill his promise? In the second reading, we have St. Paul giving us an example of how faith would uh, allow someone like him to be indifferent. He had his choice to die soon so that he could be with the, with the Lord or to continue as a missionary. But that all depends on God. Let God decide. Let God choose the path for Paul that will be beneficial for his church and for his kingdom. It's not passivity. It is cooperating, but allowing God to do what God wants. In the gospel, we have two parables coming from Jesus, parables of the kingdom of God, where he uses the image of seed. In the first parable, the sower sows seed and goes to bed and rises the following day. And how many times does he do it? Going to bed, rising the next morning. And look at the line in the gospel. Without him knowing the soil produces the sprout, the leaves, and then harvest time comes without him knowing. But the soil is gracious. The soil makes the simple seed grow and produce fruit. 
This is the image, the first image of God's kingdom. As we said, there is human activity involved, but the human person reaches a point of not knowing. And we have to admit that. Sometimes we pretend, thanks to academic, scientific, and technological studies, sometimes we pretend that we know everything. And because we know everything, we can make everything grow, even God's kingdom. Well, when it is about God's kingdom, we have to admit that there are many things we do not know. Look at what's happening in the world right now. Do we really know how to achieve fraternity and peace by ourselves? Can we not abandon ourselves, even in our unknowing, and trust in the soil that God provides so that his kingdom will bloom? And our role is to behold what God is doing and to cooperate, to water the plants, and let God make it grow. And when it is harvest time, to work hard to gather the harvest, but giving the credit to God, even when we do not know how. The humility to admit we do not know, because God's wisdom is greater and deeper than ours. In the second parable, we have the mustard seed, which, according to Jesus, is the smallest of seeds at the time. It is planted. And then the end product is unexpected. From that small seed, you have a big, big shrub and branches where birds of the air could rest. Look, huh? Look at the contrast. The small beginnings... And when God acts, wow, how great it is. But there's one detail here that I ask. How come God's kingdom is compared to a mustard seed and not to the cedar of the first reading? Aha, I do not know. But in our lack of knowledge, we know God is able to do great things beginning with the small ones. Let it grow. Let God produce the growth. Let us behold, give thanks, and cooperate. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. Brothers and sisters, many conflicts and wars are happening around us. As we speak, many families are losing their loved ones due to shelling, forced displacement, starvation, imprisonment, and other horrendous situations. Children undeservedly grow up bearing the scars of war. The earth, the environment, and ecosystems are severely damaged as well. It is said that after two world wars that altered the world's social and political landscape with the loss of lives and serious environmental catastrophe, we still continue to resort to active combat to resolve issues, or worse, to impose a particular worldview or ideology through political, economic, and military dominance. Have we forgotten God's command? The church reminds us the fifth commandment forbids the intentional destruction of human life. And so all citizens and all governments are obliged to work for the avoidance of war. The church and human reason must both assert the permanent validity of the moral law. In 1991, when the Cold War was coming to its end, Pope John Paul II made this appeal in the encyclical Centesimus Annus.
Pope John Paul II experienced firsthand the impact of war on innocent people. Born in 1920 in Wadowice, Poland, only two years after the conclusion of the First World War, he was a teenager when the Second World War broke out in 1939. This meant the interruption of his studies at Jagolian University in Krakow and his enlistment as a manual laborer in a quarry, a condition imposed on Poles during the Nazi occupation. Forced to work even in extreme cold weather, they were also exposed to dangerous explosives. At this same period of history, the Jewish people were brought to concentration and death camps. In 1942, Karol Wojtyla went underground and entered the seminary. He would be ordained a priest in 1946 when the war was over. This explains why, during his pontificate, Pope John Paul II tirelessly communicated the need for peace. He met and spoke with state leaders. He dialogued and prayed with religious leaders. He knew what war can do to people and why all people must contribute to peacemaking. But what is peace? Is peace achievable? Let the Catechism of the Catholic Church speak to our hearts once more. prepared reflection points for you. Please share them with your companions. The first point is, do we allow God's action to prosper and bear fruit? Hinahayaan ba natin ang kilos ng Diyos na sumagana at mamunga? The second point is, what attitudes prevent us from cooperating with God's action? Anong mga ugali ang nagpipigil sa atin para makiisa, makilahok sa kilos ng Diyos. Heavenly Father, You have blessed this humble program with a decade of mission on air. You have gifted it with the talents, hard work, and financial support of many generous people so that as Your Word is exposed, many more may know, love, and serve Jesus. Lord Jesus, be with us always, your production staff and partners, your viewers and benefactors, that we may not run out of courage, zeal, and charity in fulfilling our mission daily. And when our limitations and weaknesses surface, please ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to purify us and set our hearts on fire with renewed faith, hope, and love, so we may serve you for many more years to come. Amen. Friends, thank you for your company. We pray that the Word of God would find fulfillment in your life and His blessings be always upon you. And we hope you could be with us again next Sunday here on The Word Exposed.